concrete river. I led her there when the sun drooped like a slack hammock long into the late afternoon, away from mall arcades, swamp meets, and pool halls. My body, an L on the radiator concrete cap, tilted her head face up on my lap. I'd gush out poems from a half rolled up portable beat reader, enunciate each verse cool and staccato. At least that's how I thought it was done. The words were all baby O, cold late dinners on 42nd Street, bird, mad and holy genitals, end in exclamation point, and I knew nothing about any of it. Right before the moon unleashed a mouthful on those mucky locomotives in Ginsburg's Sunflower Sutra, she'd cut me off and hound on about freight trains, their tatted boxcars and gutter punks hiding in ditches ready to catch the next one. She had a love thing with those busted old rigs ever since she climbed the top of one of them, bored, revolted at the same old Samos, and watched the dust settle in the empty rail yard. Said one day she'd hop a grainer or empty gondola through Azusa Mountains, past the Badlands to the Danube, hightail it quick without much of a goodbye note. Overhead, helicopters whizz by like dragonflies. I placed the dying cigarette on her lips that opened the width of a thimble. Then she swigged the last driblet of orange juice and Mickey's, an easy swipe from Uncle Tony's icebox. She flung that green grenade, then two more across the channel. I wanted the shatter to ring and jingle like miniature copper bells, hit hard and pop like shards of stars or Chinese firecrackers. Yeah, like black cats, thunder bombs, big Bertha, the large happy. But it was just us and a river broken down to skin and bones. Thank you.